Today on Voiding Warranties, I'm going to show you several methods that you probably shouldn't use to repair your gaming console. Or anything. Really, these are questionable ideas at best. Voiding Warranties is proudly sponsored by... Oh, hey hun. Um, no, I, I, I wasn't using the oven earlier. Haven't seen that cookie sheet. Huh. Odd. Alright, now that I have your attention, let me show you the first method. Now this is partially derived from the old towel trick for Xbox 360s, where you wrap the Xbox in a towel, and then you turn it on, let it run for 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes until it burns down your house, or it solves the problem. Today, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to put the whole Xbox, plastic shell, DVD drive and all, in my oven and see if that fixes it. Look, I already have it labeled. Oh, I'm not 100% sure I put these in the right place. Um, is that the temperature for an Xbox 360? Um, oh, carry the one. Let's try it there. I think a PS3, PS3 is more sensitive to heat, right? Let's try that there. And, and graphics cards, they're, they're designed to take punishment, so. Now while I'm waiting for the 7 to preheat, let me explain to you the basics of why methods like this sometimes work and what actually breaks inside your video game console. Modern video game consoles and a lot of modern electronics use something called a ball grid array in order to connect processors onto the actual printed circuit board. Basically means you have a processor on top, then some balls underneath, and these balls are made of solder. These solder balls, they melt in between the processor and the printed circuit board. Simple, right? They connect it electrically, everything works. The problem is, as video games run, the processor heats up, and the processor expands and contracts at a different rate than the actual printed circuit board. This causes the pads on the processor to start pulling away from the pads on the circuit board. They try and move around a little bit. Now these balls of solder are caught in between. So a number of things can happen. Either the balls of solder glue the two in place, they don't move, or the ball of solder lifts off either the pad on the printed circuit board or the pad on the processor. So now that you understand a little bit about what the most common or most known fault is, let's toss it in there and see what happens. I should probably mention you should only use the reflow oven, also known as the paint drying oven, when your spouse is not here. My wife is not happy when I use this and she's around. Um, she's not happy when I use this and she's not around, but as long as she doesn't find out, it seems to work out okay. Alright, I'll admit, it's like waiting for cookies to bake. You just want to look in and see what they look like. Are they ready yet? Mmm, tasty cookies. Not tasty yet. I say we give it about 10 more minutes and then we check for doneness. Now, the way I was always taught with these, if you stick the knife in them and the knife comes back out clean, that means it's done. Now let's check with the knife. Knife comes out cleanly, it must be done. All right, now we're getting into the second potential fix. Most people use the X-Clamp mod or a shim mod. They're all basically the same. The idea is to keep more pressure on the processor, keep that ball grid array flat and connected so everything works. And they can work sometimes, but they're not a long-term solution because if the cooling problem that existed before still exists, eventually something's gonna pull, something's gonna break, and it's gonna break again. I have a different version of this mod. It's called the cinder block mod. Now, the first step for all these mods is getting the case off, but my security bit said it, it's inside the house. It's, it's way in there and I don't feel like getting it. So I have another solution, the circular saw. 
this is a horrible idea. You know, all that, I think I went in through the wrong side. Oh, I forgot about this part. Can we edit this out to make it look like, you know, I actually knew what I was doing here? You know, I really could go inside at any time and, and get my, my security bit set. Nah. Again, it's a long walk to get other tools. Maybe I should put the circular saw on the ground first. Safety. And the mod is complete. You're gonna have to wait a little bit to find out the results though. Now for the next one. All right, Keith. I subcontracted. We're gonna get this thing open one way or the other. Ah! Oh, you put a crack in it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, get the big guns. Oh, all right. Oh. Oh, I am leaving him off on that one. Xboxes are all. Oh, be careful. Get yourself, okay? All right. Now see if you can pry off some pieces from that. Okay, that's one way to use a hammer. <laughs> He's like, I'm just going to use a hammer to do this. Always use the right tool for the job. <laughs> there's no, In this case, there's no, no kind of tool for this. Oh, uh, come over here. Well, there are plenty of kinds of tools for this job. They're just inside. It's a long walk. The shovel is out here. Here, you want some help, Keith? Here. Thank you, thank you. All right, you, you did a lot of the hard work here. Let me see if I can get the last little bit, okay? Eh, good enough. All right, this next method, it's gonna be something kind of similar to a hot plate reflow, except uh, the hot plate, it's all the way inside, and it's a good day for a barbecue. This is a horrible idea, kids. I don't want you to try this ever. Okay. This is a horrible idea, viewers. I don't want you to try this ever. All right, now let's give the coals a minute to warm up. You know, it doesn't really matter. If this was steaks, I'd actually care, but it's an Xbox and a broken one. You know, sitting by the roaring fire like this, it, it makes me think of, of all, the, all the settlers and how they repaired their Xboxes back in the 1800s. I, I'm, I'm sure they, they used something close to this, because without electricity, how are you going to run a hot plate? I think it's brilliant. All right, now, this part is really important. You want to uh, get the processor on top of the flames. Now, the base will act like a heat spreader, but you want to make sure the processor gets a lot of the heat here. And you also want to have enough, enough of an air path for the smoke to get out so it doesn't snuff the fire. Now, this thing, hmm. 
Also, uh, you want to remove any anything plastic like the fan shroud, the DVD drive. Um, you're probably going to blow some electrolytic capacitors in this because they're not rated for the temperature required for a reflow, and you can't really remove them if you're using a hot plate method. Okay, it's done. But now that you've seen other people's methods with my interpretation, let me show you my method for fixing an Xbox 360. Now, I have some Xbox 360 reflow powder right there, and this is going to facilitate the whole process. It's going to heat up the board and processor together and make everything reflow and work. And it's going to do it quickly. Let me show you. Let's see if we can get a close-up of the action. See the reflow powder? It's hard at work making sure that this will work uh, at least as well as it did before. Oh wow, that is very energetic. I like that mix. I'm going to have to keep that mix. Alright, as you can see, the processor and graphics chip have both been reflowed. In fact, you can see everything that's flowed out of them and around them. Alright, so let's have a quick breakdown of how it all worked out. Oven reflow. I can't even plug it in anymore. The, the cord just won't fit. The, uh, the receptacle is melted. Cinder block clamp. Didn't actually help. Yeah, disappointing. Pioneer reflow. Yeah, there's a reason why we don't do it now the way they did it back then. It doesn't work. And space age reflow. You know what? I, I, I really was hoping for this one. It, it, it smells nice, kind of a caramely cotton candy smell, but just doesn't work. Now, I don't want you to think that there are no methods that actually work here. You can sometimes salvage your Xbox and get it to last for a few more years. Um, I wouldn't recommend the towel method, especially if you're out of warranty, because you can cook a lot of extra components inside there. I mean, you can see on this one, it cooked a lot of the capacitors, and you can actually do that using the towel method. You don't want that. Um, the clamp method, it works sometimes. You can clamp down the processor, get some extra life out of it. But unless you add cooling, it doesn't really fix anything. Microsoft actually tried this. They epoxied some of their later chips onto the board to prevent them from popping off. And I I've heard mixed reviews about the whole thing. Now, for actually taking a hot plate and trying to do a reflow yourself, if you have nothing to lose, if, if this is a machine that really is worth nothing at this point, go ahead, give it a shot. But, honestly, you're going to break something. It really is hit or miss. Some people, they fix it and it lasts for years. Some people, they fix it and then it breaks a week later, a month later. And then it never works again, no matter how hard they try. And, finally, don't use rocket candy to try and fix it. If you like this video and how I've explained how to cook an Xbox 360, please click like. And if you want to see more cooking tips involving video game consoles and potentially other hardware, please click subscribe.